You know what I haven't done in quite a while? Fuse testing. Yeah. I got a package in the me in the meal. I got a package in the mail from Mike Smith. That almost sounds like a fake name. Fake name. Mike said he wanted to send me out some of those eighth watt resistors. Now I was gonna test these a while ago, but I never had a chance to go down to Radio Shack to buy any. By the time I did make it down there, it was a sprint store. Anyway, Mike sent some over to me to have them tested on the old fuse testers. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now I haven't used it in quite a while. It's over there kind of my horde pile is kind of moving over a little bit so I need to take some crap off of it real quick and clean off this mess and then we'll get right to it It appears that my hot glue came loose. So I'll have to do a quick repair and re hot glue it down real quick. Alrighty, while the glue is drying, I'm gonna set that over here real quick. And we'll open this up, do some quick measurements and all that kind of stuff like I normally do, and then we'll get on with the test. Okay, now you cannot see the address. I hope. <gasps> There's a note. Okie dokie, remember my rule? All right, here we go. Uh, hey Joe. Here's some 8th ohm resistors. They are from two different sellers. One looks thicker than the other. I'll be using on negative side only. I'm using one amp fast axles on the positive side. I sent some extra just in case you might get bored and want to blow some up. I like to blow stuff up. Sometimes on accident too. Uh, where was that? Or use on a side project. Anyway, thanks for testing. Looking forward to some more videos. Love your show. Like your cats. And again, thanks, Mike Smith. And then there's wordage on the back. Oh yeah, what's the most important thing you learned from your project? I don't know. I'll think about it and let you know at the end of the video. And just an idea, you ought to do a show on just wires for solar projects like gauge sizes, gauge sizes that was me not him like gauge sizes for beginners like me just a thought have a great day I am gonna do a video on like all the specifics on my power wall and I can give some suggestions on some stuff of course every project is gonna vary a little bit but yeah I do plan on doing a video with specifics on mine and how much it costs etc and of course I'll have links to everything if anybody wanted more information or wanted to get anything similar to what I have so I will be doing a video about that stuff here pretty soon okay so this is eighth ohm resistors I would imagine it is eighth watt but I'm not really sure so we're gonna test a couple of each not really sure why I'm standing so close now okay dokey smoky so we have two um, yeah so I'll uh, I'll do some quick measurements with these and then we'll get on with the test All right, so we are going to label this one as number one with the brown paper. 0 0.013 inches and 0.34 millimeters. Number two, we're going to go with the yellow and I'll make sure we are zeroed out. I believe this one's the same. 0 0.013 inches and 0.34 millimeters. Okie doke, so they both measure the exact same. This should be dry now. 
Nope, drop the nail. Just gotta put it together real quick here. There we go, nice and taut. So I am going to solder some of these to some little mini bus bars so we can try to make it realistic as we can. Okie dokie smoky. So I soldered four resistors to four different mini bus bars and these are the twisted pair which measure 1.6 millimeters or 0 0.063 inches. I have two of these and two of the 12 gauge wire and those are 2.04 millimeters or 0 0.08 inches. Alrighty so for those of you that have never seen this before or don't know exactly what's going on I'll explain it for you so if anybody wants to replicate it they can I am using a computer power supply it's nothing fancy or anything like that it's got a total of 330 watts I will typically do all the tests on the 5 volt or the 3.3 volt rail this one can do a max of 32 amps on the 5 volt side and a total of 14 amps on the 3.3 volt side the orange wire that I'll be using Using for the test today will supply 3.3 volts uh, there's also the red wires which is 5 volts and then yellow for 12 volts black is obviously ground so we are going to use the 3.3 volt side of this power supply it comes into the shunt the only reason that the shunt is going to be used is so we can see how many amps it's going to take to pop the fuse and the only reason I'm using this analog amp meter is because well I don't have a digital one I could technically use a meter like this but if it goes over 10 amps I'll pop the fuse out of that so that's the main reason why I'm using the older style analog amp meter okay so okay so we go through the shunt we move over to this area this is where the whole testing thing takes place this is a resistance wire from a blow dryer I have three strands kind of twisted together and the only reason I'm doing that is because whenever you start pulling the higher amps the wire will start to glow red hot and if you hold it there for too long you'll actually burn up the wire and uh, which actually happened in this section don't look at this area right here this end used to actually be over here but I burn it out too many times and it kind of got a little jacked up so I kind of made this little thingy right here don't look at that if somebody did want to repeat this test they could use the same resistance wire I'm using or you could probably get the resistance wire that a lot of the vapors use it's pretty much the same thing the voltage will travel down here and on the other end I have a nail attached to a clamp and then of course that goes all the way over to the fuse so what I end up doing is starting way down here on the lower end and down here it usually starts out about one amp maybe just a little bit less so what you do is just drag the nail up the resistance wire basically until the fuse pops all right so then after the wires it goes into the fuse and from there it kind of travels down the little bus bar and goes into the negative side of the power supply this meter here is also a voltmeter the voltage that you see on this is the going to be the voltage from here to the nail and how much voltage drop is actually happening during the test. This meter right over here is going to be for the voltage drop across the fuse. So I have a positive end here and the negative end attached to the bus bar and it's set to millivolts. A lot of people do like to know that so that is some 
some good information to have. All right, so the very first test, I'm gonna leave the view just like this so you guys can see exactly how it's gonna go. I will say whenever I go through the different transitions, especially this one right here, sometimes the amp meter can kind of go back down to zero. That's just basically because the nail came off the wire. So occasionally you do see that. I try to make it as smooth as possible, but it doesn't always happen. Also, if we do happen to make it up here towards the very, very top, the wire does get hot and it does stick to the nail. So sometimes up here, it can be a little jumpy as well. Again, I'll try to make it as smooth as possible. And for the test and probably the rest of the test, I'm just gonna do a 10 millimeter gap just to make it easy on the rest of the tests. Alrighty, first test. 10 millimeter gap, 14 gauge, twisted pair. Contact. All right, so we're starting off at just below one amp. We're at two amps right now. Just over three and a half amps, five amps. And this is already starting to get warm, so I'm gonna grab a little pair of pliers. About eight amps, nine amps. So that one looked to be under 10 amps. Of course, I was looking here, not there. For the rest of the tests, I'm gonna do the close-up view. First one, I'll start down a little bit lower so you can kind of see the amp meter go up. And the next couple of tests after that, I'm gonna start up here on the upper end because we already know it's gonna be closer to the eight to 10 amp range. I'll get the fuse changed out real quick and we'll start the next test. Oh my God, boom! I am freaking dead on, nice. All right, the very next test is gonna be on the 14 gauge twisted pair with a 10 millimeter gap. Corn tech. Alrighty, I didn't really get to see that one since I was looking over here at the resistance wire, but uh, of course I will flash it up on the screen. Alright, so the next two tests are going to be pretty much the same, but they're just going to be for consistency. The only thing different is we're using a 12 gauge twisted pair. And I'm also going to start higher on the resistance wire so we don't have to go through all the transitions. Corn tech. Okay, so for that test, it was right around the 8 amp mark, but of course I'll have to review the video to make sure. Once I saw it starting to change color, I just stopped and let it go from there. All right, next test is pretty much the exact same. We're doing a 12 gauge twisted pair with a 10 millimeter gap, and I figured we might as well get a close up view just so we can see exactly what's happening. Car tech. We're at 8 amps right now. Yeah, it does look like if you go up to the nine amp mark, it will start to glow red and finally make its way down to about eight amps and pop. All right, so the following tests are all of the second resistor with the yellow paper. The first two tests are gonna be of the 14 gauge twisted pair and we're still using the 10 millimeter gap. And I'm also gonna start further down on the resistance wire since we already know it's gonna pop a little bit higher. Contact. Alrighty, of course I wasn't watching that one, I was watching the resistance wire, but I'll flash it up on the screen. Alright, next test is going to be for consistency, and we're on the same of the 14 gauge twisted pair with a 10 millimeter gap. Color tech. Alright, I totally missed that one again because I was watching the resistance wire, but I'll flash it up on the screen. Alright, next test is the 12 gauge twisted pair with a 10 millimeter gap. Corn tech.
All right, so I think these are pretty much popping the exact same as the previous resistor. I can kind of get it up to around the nine amp mark and then it starts to glow red. It'll back off to about eight and then pop. All right, next test is gonna be the exact same 12 gauge twisted pair with a 10 millimeter gap. Just a close up view. Come on, tech. Alrighty, I have one left and this one we're just going to kind of mix it up a little bit just to see what happens. We're going to be using a 12 gauge twisted pair but I changed the gap to 5 millimeters. And I'm also going to start it off at the higher end of the resistance wire. Come on, tech. All right, well, I didn't really get to see that since I was watching the resistance wire over here glow, but I did see it go up to around the 18 amp mark, but I'll, of course, put it in slow motion and all that kind of stuff. But you could obviously see that if you shorten the gap, it's gonna take a lot more amps to pop that fuse. Alrighty there, Mike Smith with the fake name. I'm just kidding, that's probably your real name, right? Yeah, I do think that these would be just fine for the negative side. I, I kind of think they'll be okay for the positive side, but for me personally, since I have my power wall in my house, I wanted to go with the lowest amp that I could find without having too much resistance because I kind of want to catch a cell on its way out. So if I can get it to pop really, really low, then it won't bring the rest of the battery pack down. Down, it'll pop the fuse and be done with. Oh, and I want to say one of the most important things I've learned about this entire build project. Well, there's a couple, but always test everything, whether it's your cells, fuses. You should definitely check all fuses. You shouldn't even take my word for it. Matter of fact, you shouldn't even go with the results that I came up with. You shouldn't even watch this video. Everything in here is probably f I'm just kidding. But what I will say is one of the most important things that I've learned in this entire build project is safety. At the very, very beginning of this, I didn't know anything about safety. And since all of this is in my basement, I mean, I don't wanna have any problems. Sure, I am taking a risk since it is in my basement, but I think I've taken quite a few safety precautions. There is a few others that I still need to add, like some other circuit breakers and some fuses, which will come hopefully here shortly. Safety. Safety is the most important thing I've learned during this whole project. And then after that, test everything. Don't just take somebody's word for it. That's what I would do. All right, well, I hope all of you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you, Mike, for sending me out some resistors. And yes, I do want to say that these are eighth ohm resistors. I don't think that they are eighth watt resistors. I want to say the tabs off of those resistors are just a little bit thinner, but I honestly don't know because I don't have any. If anybody does have some eighth watt resistors and want to send them to me, you can send them to the address down below and I'll do another test video on those and we'll see how they compare to these. All right, so that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one. So there you go, but to have them tested, tested, so, and grab it, uh, let, I, uh, fast X, looks like it says axis, facts at, fast, uh, well, I don't, I don't, um, um, all right, I'm gonna glue, and, um, uh, um, uh, not sure what this meter's doing actually. I'm gonna have to get a different meter. This one's acting a little weird. Doing random shit now. And the reason I made this kind of funky alligator clip is, of course, the beeping. I haven't had to do that in a while. Replic replicate replication. I'm gonna Alrighty. Uh um uh um uh um and I guess uh you but I would but